These modifications have a few problems. One, the stand would be easier to maneuver around the cramped garage had it made all four casters swivel instead of just two. Two, raising and lowering the casters is a bit awkward. Three, once that table is installed, it's no longer practical to change the depth of cut. Four, also, once the table is installed, it's not practical to change the blade. Five, the blade and the riving knife are difficult to align. Six, the depth of cut is relatively limited. And seven, the speed knob is on the other side, which must be turned down before turning off the machine using the switch on this side. This is the Shopsmith power station. It's designed to allow you to run the Shopsmith bandsaw, belt sander, jointer, and disc and drum sanders. Shopsmith also made a similar unit with some add-ons called the crafter station. It included a table saw table and mounting to mount the tubes for the table and a reversing switch. I've tried to reproduce those modifications here on my power station, but I'm here to tell you, they don't really work. If you really want to hear from an expert on these tools, go check out My Growth Rings YouTube channel. Scott also has an excellent article on his Tool Hunter blog about these machines. The Crafter Station came with a special mounting system to mount the standard Mark V table. I looked for one of those used for a long time and couldn't find one. So I've made this one out of plywood, but quite frankly, it's pretty difficult to use. To secure the table, I've just got two mounting collars here attached to the tube and I sandwich those together with a clamp and lock down the bottom one. Another important aspect of the modification in order to get the power station to run in table saw mode is this reversing switch. Installing the switch involved tracing out the size, drilling a couple holes, and then just cutting out the rest with a jigsaw and smoothing it up with a file. Let me crack open the cover so I can show you what's on the inside, including the relay that I added. While I'm getting that cover off, let me say that I got the idea to make these modifications from the Shopsmith Forum. One of the most prolific forum posters, Dusty, shared some really essential wiring diagrams. Amazon had all the parts I needed. A relay, quick connects, the perfect amount of multicolor wire, heat shrink tubing that's no longer available, although loads just like it are all over, and the safety switch. If you've ever opened a Shopsmith headstock, these two sheaves may look familiar. Behind them is the relay necessary in order to reverse the direction of the motor. In simple terms, you turn this switch on to make the motor spin clockwise, or you turn this switch on to make the motor spin counterclockwise. I am glad I installed the switch to reverse the motor, but I don't think I'll use the table saw on this machine again. It's just not worth it. The other modification I've made is this set of homemade casters. I can't claim credit for these DIY casters either. The rough concept comes from an article on the Woodsmith website. These work okay, but I'd much rather have the OEM caster set built for this power station. And I was able to source a used set of those casters, which I'll install shortly. I already took off the table support, so that's done. Now I gotta get these casters off so I can get the OEM set on. I'm getting started installing the casters, and the instructions talk about using these nuts, screws, and spacers in order to install the casters on the power stand. So 
that's the cast our bodies install. Now I gotta get the wheels on. In order to do that, I'm just gonna tip it over and press them in. Thanks for watching. Please consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons. And as always, your comments are welcomed and appreciated.